adding and subtracting fractions. I'll go ahead and tell you up front that it kind of like integers where adding and subtracting was more difficult. I really think adding and subtracting fractions is the most difficult operation with that set of numbers. So once you get past today, it should be downhill from there. The main idea is to add or subtract fractions, you must rewrite the fractions with a common denominator. So you can't just take them as is, you have to manipulate them, you have to rewrite those fractions so that they have a common denominator. So for your how to, step one, you find the least common multiple of the denominators. And if you'll think about what you just wrote down on that slide, I didn't say the least common multiple in that one, I just said a common denominator. It doesn't necessarily have to be the least common one, but if you keep your number smaller, if you choose the least one that they have in common, then you're gonna have, you won't have to do near as much simplifying. So with our example problem, we have five eighths plus five over 12. Notice that I have stacked these fractions. A lot of times they'll be written horizontally and you can definitely do it that way, but especially when you're starting out with adding and subtracting fractions, I think it's wise to stack them because it makes converting them to the common denominator much, easily, much easier. So that common denominator is going to be 24. Second step, I'm going to rename those fractions by multiplying across to get that new denominator. So let's look at 5 eighths. I ask myself, what do I need to multiply 8 by to get 24? And that's 3. So I'm going to multiply the top by 3 and the bottom by three. That's a little crooked, not too pretty, I apologize. So then I'm gonna multiply across. Five times three is 15. Do the same thing with the bottom one, except I'm not multiplying by three, it's going to be a different multiple. To go from 12 to 24, I multiply by two. So I multiply five times two and I get 10. I have renamed these fractions. I have not changed their value. If I were to simplify 15 over 24, it would go back down to 5 eighths. Um, or if I were to get the decimal of 5 over 12, that would be the same decimal as 10 over 24. I haven't just changed the numerator or the denominator. I have changed both parts. Now I'm going to add or subtract the numerators and I'm going to keep the denominators. So I'm adding 15 and 10, which is 25. And then I'm going to keep that denominator. And finally, I'm going to simplify. And you'll see that anytime you're dealing with fractions, your final step is always going to be to simplify. When we're talking about simplifying, there's two parts to that. One, you are reducing it. You're dividing by a common multiple. 25 over 24 cannot be reduced. They do not have any common multiples that I can divide out. The other side of simplifying is to change any improper fractions into a mixed number. And as you see here, we have an improper fraction. The top number is greater than the bottom number. So to convert that, I say 24 goes into 25 one time, and I have one left over. I can kind of check to make sure I did that simplifying right by multiplying and going around the world, as we like to call it. 24 times 1 is 24, plus 1 is 25. So those are equivalent numbers. And my answer is 1 and 1 over 24. Some tricks to see if a number is simplified and that it's reduced enough. If there's a 1 on top, you always know it's completely reduced. Or if the numbers are consecutive. If I have 3 over 4, that's reduced. If I have 7 over 8, that's reduced. 13 over 14, that is reduced. Go ahead and pause the video. Take a, um, take a stab at those and see how you do and then compare with what I come up with.
Okay, let's compare. On practice A, the common denominator that I found was 40. These are written horizontally, and as I said in the last slide, you can definitely add or subtract them horizontally, and this is the kind of the way that I do that, but some of you may want to rewrite the numbers by stacking them, and that's completely fine. To go from 10 to 40, I multiplied by 4. 1 times 4 is 4. For 5 over 8, I have to multiply by 5 because 8 times 5 is 40. 5 times 5 is 25. Now, when I go to subtract these, I see that I'm taking away more than what I started with, so I'm going to be going into the negatives. You could either think of your integer rules, you could keep change change, and then you would have 4 plus a negative 25. I was able to just look at that and know that I'm going 21 into the negative because in my head I said the difference between 4 and 25 is 21. If you'll remember when we talked about integers, I told you that it's kind of like a new language that you're learning. You start by counting on your fingers or using counters or number lines, but then eventually it starts to happen in your head, and you'll probably start to see that now that these processes are coming much more naturally to you. For practice B, I have three numbers. I still need to find a common denominator for all three of them, and one of the given denominators actually is the least common denominator. For 2 over 9, I need to multiply by 2 because 9 times 2 is 18. So I multiply my top numbers, 2 times 2 is 4. 7 over 18 just comes down. 1 over 6, I'm going to multiply by 3 because 6 times 3 is 18. 1 times 3 is 3. Order of operations tells me to go left to right with adding and subtracting. 4 minus 7 is negative 3. Then I'm going to add 3 over 18. And when I look at that, see how they are opposites of each other? It's the additive inverse, so they're going to have a sum of zero.